Hey guys, I'm Benjamina and today I'm going to be showing you how to make my roasted squash and nigella seed soda bread for my new cookbook, A Good Day to Bake. So the first thing we need to do is start roasting our butternut squash. So we only need about 12 ounces, so roughly that. Save that for some soup or something else, put that to the side. And I'm just going to take off the skin. So soda bread is such a good and quick and very, very easy bread. And I'm not just saying that. If you've never made bread before or bread kind of scares you or yeast scares you because it can scare some people, then this is a good bread to start off with. And I'm going to flavour mine with some roasted squash for a bit of earthiness and sweetness. And it also gives it a really nice orangey colour inside. So we need to roast our squash first to make sure it's got the maximum amount of flavour. I'm just going to cut this into rounds and then just dice it up into cubes. They don't have to be perfect, just make sure they're roughly the same size so they cook at the same time because we're going to mash them up later so they don't have to look beautiful and perfect at this point. Once you've chopped all of your squash, add it to your baking tray. Move this out of the way. And all we're going to do is add a little drizzle of olive oil. Get it nice and crisp. And now it's time to season because we always season our food. So I've just got a bit of salt. It's just going to go on there. And I've got some chili flakes for a bit of heat. I like heat in my food. If you want it spicier, please, please, please add more. And if you're not keen on chili, then of course, just add a bit less. Now I've also got two other spices. I've got some smoked paprika, which is going to add a nice smokiness, really subtle, but you're going to know that it's there. And I've also got some ground cumin, which just adds another layer of flavor to our squash, which is then going to add more flavor to our soda bread. Once you've got all your spices on your pan, go in with your hands, give it a little massage, a little rub, and just make sure everything is coated in the oil and the spices. Make sure they're spread out nice and evenly. And then all we're gonna do now is roast that in the oven at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 210 degrees Celsius for about 25 to 30 minutes. We just wanna make sure they're cooked all the way through, they're softened so they can get mashed a little bit later and they're gonna have a nice little char on them as well. And that's gonna add even more flavor to our soda bread. So let's get this in the oven. This recipe is found in the vegetable chapter of my book and I wanted to devote a chapter to vegetables because within baking it can often get kind of pushed to the sideline but I just wanted to celebrate all the really cool things you can do with vegetables and baking, both sweet and savoury. The soda breads and quick breads in general are really different from your regular you know, white loaf or sourdough and that sort of thing. We don't use any yeast in this recipe. It's the bicarbonate of soda that allows it to rise. And we don't actually need the dough. The less you need it, the better. So if you are scared of bread, soda bread is such a good one to start with. Forget all you know about bread and you'll have something really delicious at the end. My butternut squash has come out of the oven and it's roasted, it's softened to touch and we've got a little bit of um, some char marks on there so I know it's going to taste great. So all I need to do now is just pour this into a bowl and I'm going to mash it up till it's fairly smooth. I'm not going to use like a food processor or anything, just a fork. It doesn't need to be like a puree but just mashed enough to blend with my buttermilk. So get in with a fork. You could use a potato masher, but I think fork is just, it's easy, it's there. Give it a good mash. And your squash should be soft enough that it gives quite easily. So that looks about right. It's kind of that consistency. That's what you're looking for. So not perfectly smooth, but still a little bit of texture. Um, and next, I'm just going to mix that in with my buttermilk 
Um, buttermilk is great here because it's going to react with the bicarbonate of soda, which is going to make our bread rise and puff up and just look absolutely stunning. If you don't have buttermilk, you could use a mix of milk and yogurt. So you still get that acidity if you can't find any buttermilk. That's a good substitution. So I'm just going to go in with my buttermilk. Make sure you've got all your buttermilk in there and then just give it a good mix. Scotch. I actually really like that scotchy sound. It's a bit weird, but I do. And then that's going to turn a really nice orange colour. So just set that aside. We're going to come back to that in a couple of minutes. And on to the flours. I've got a 50-50 mix of plain flour and a whole wheat flour. I have made this with completely plain flour and it is still really delicious, but I think the earthiness that you get from the whole wheat flour really does complement the squash. So do try it 50-50 first, and then you can kind of play around with quantities and see what you like. So I'm just gonna mix the whole wheat into the plain. And some salt goes in there and our bicarbonate of soda, and this is key here. Most breads that are leavened need yeast, but soda breads are fantastic because all you need is bicarbonate of soda, which most people have, and you're probably not as intimidated by as people are usually intimidated by yeast. So that just goes in here. And this is what's gonna react with our buttermilk to give a really, really beautiful rise on our soda bread. Going to give that a quick stir. And then the last thing I'm going to add to this is our nigella seeds. And I absolutely love these seeds. If you've not used them before, do try and get your hands on them and just give them a good sniff and you'll understand why I love them so much. You've probably seen them used most commonly in Indian cooking, in like naan breads. So I've got two teaspoons here, go straight into the mix. So give that a really good stir, just to make sure it's all even and spread throughout. And then just make a well in the center of your bowl. And all we're gonna do, this is very, very simple, we're just gonna pour in our squash and buttermilk mixture in the middle, give it a mix, we have bread. And now we just start stirring and bringing this together. It's gonna look like there's not enough liquid in here at first, and you're gonna be very tempted to add like milk or water in here. Do not, just persist. Give it a few mixes, try and get all the dry bits at the bottom incorporated. It started to clump together, so what I'm gonna do now is go in with my hands just to finish it off. So, in with the hands, just start giving it a squeeze and trying to make it form one mass before we turn it out onto our surface. This is quite the opposite of most breads where you kind of just go in, you start kneading, you're sweating, it's tiring, it's not that fun sometimes. This is not that. We want to be a bit more gentle with this. We don't want to knead it too much. So I'm going to turn this out onto my surface. And again, it's still looking a little bit dry, trust me. It's coming together. So you want to just start gently kneading and turning it. Make sure you catch any stray bits running away. Literally just a couple of kneads and turns. And you're not looking for this to get really smooth and supple and elastic like you would for other doughs. You kind of want this a bit scraggly and a bit rough and a bit rustic. That's the vibe of a soda bread. So don't overwork it. Don't look for 
um, a surface that's like really smooth and tight. We want it to be scraggly. So that looks about right. All I'm gonna do now is shape it into a rough ball, just with the cups of my hands like that. Go around a few times. If you find that it's starting to stick, just put some flour on your surface. And it's at this point, I think it's beautiful. You got some of the nigella seeds peeking through. You got flecks of squash running through there. It's already a really nice orange color and it's not even baked yet. So to me, this is beautiful. Right, so all we need to do now is get a sharp knife or a bent scraper and we're gonna cut a really deep cross inside and this is gonna allow it to rise and to get that steam running through. So go quite low, but not all the way through. Once I've got my cross nice and deep in the middle, all I need to do is grab my bent scraper and we're gonna go very quickly and very confidently onto this tray. So get underneath it and shift it across. Easy. And to finish it off, I'm just gonna put a few more nigella seeds on top. And it's really nice when they fall in the cracks as well when they bake. I'm gonna bake this for about 45 to 50 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 210 degrees Celsius until it's well risen. The crust is gonna be nice and dark and hollow. And I just can't wait to get into this. So let's get it in the oven. With this book, I really wanted to just break things down simply. I wanna focus on how things taste more than how they look. And so showing you ways that you can incorporate flavor really easily, even if there are recipes that you're not familiar with some of the ingredients, um, I just wanna show how easy they are to make. Our soda bread has come out of the oven and it smells absolutely divine. It's a beautiful dark color and it sounds hollow when you tap it so we know it's all cooked and I'm just gonna slice it and get involved. Ooh. That sound is honestly heavenly. So you can still see there are some chunks of butternut squash. You get the nigella seeds running through there and it's a really nice yellowy color. I like to have my soda bread when it's still a little bit warm and this does actually taste best on the day that it's made. So once you make it, just dive in. Butter it up. Mmm, that's good guys, that's really, really good. You have to make it. Thank you so much for joining me as I made this super easy, delicious soda bread. It's been an absolute pleasure baking with V52 the past couple of weeks. And if you want some more of my recipes, you can grab a copy of my cookbook, A Good Day to Bake, and I'll be back here next week with my roasted carrot and harissa galette. So don't forget to like and subscribe.